Well, Merry Christmas viewers, it's Blue Boy here again, and it's Christmas Day here, December 25th, 2018, in Australia, and it's a beautiful, hot summer day, clear as a bell, what better time to do my long-awaited Z-Pax tent off, Doosh. So what are we going to compare in this video? We're going to compare the King of the Mountain, the Duplex, with the new kid on the block, the Plexamid, and then also compare how these two stack up against the outgoing and finishing, finished up Hexamid Solo Plus Tent and Hexamid Solo Tarp Only. So, it's going to be awesome, it's going to be thorough. I've got a whole spreadsheet with all my specs and stats to back up my claims. Who will win? Who will come out on top? Stick around to find out. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is set them all up and see how long and difficult it is to set them all up. Then we'll compare them. So, let's get cracking. We'll start with the duplex. There you go, that's the duplex done. Okay, now onto the Plexamid with one pole and ten stakes. Okay, second tent set up, onto the third one. The Plexamid Solo Plus Tent. Third one set up. The last one to go, the uh, Hexamid Solo um, tarp, pocket tarp, with the uh, bathtub floor, one pole, and eight stakes. Okay, the hard job's done. Setting them all up. Don't they look beautiful? Now for the fun job. We get to go through them in all the detailed glory. Let's check it out. So I've got these four Z-Pax tents. I've owned three of them. The Duplex, the Hexamid Solo Plus, and the Hexamid Solo Tarp for quite a while. And the Plexamid is a new addition to my kit here and I'll be using it in the next two weeks in Tasmania, but uh, I've got a good feel of it for it so far. So I've gone through in detail of all these four tents um, and given them scores on different things like weight, volume, stakes needed, pitch ease, all that sort of stuff. So we're gonna start with going through my scores for the duplex tent, and here it is. Okay, let's do this thing, starting with the duplex. So I'm just gonna le read through my list of uh, categories and the score that I've given each tent. Uh, so this duplex, the first one is weight, so just on 600 grams, so I've given it an 8 out of 10, it's pretty good. Uh, volume, I've uh, put it, submerged it in some water. Okay, and now we've got the duplex, the used duplex, been on quite a few hikes now. Got some red Australian dirt in there. Another repair. And now we're going to put it in this waterproof bag, seal it up. That's just gone. 
I've got it probably under and there's still a bit of volume and that's just gone it's actually nine and a half litres so it's actually smaller volume than the Plexamid that's, cr that's crazy that's four and a half litres and it gives a surprisingly small volume actually of 4.5 litres so uh, while it's not the smallest by a long shot it's actually not huge either so I've given that a score of 10, 7 out of 10 cost it's 599 US dollars uh, so I think that's pretty good value for a two person um, fully enclosed um, tent made of Cuban fibre or Dyneema so I've given that 8 out of 10 uh, poles needed it needs two poles at 48 inches um, which most people carry two poles some people like Joe Valesco the founder of Z-Pax only likes to carry one he's made a special super duper version of it called a walking pole it's like 60 inches it can be raked down to 48 inches so he's a bit stuck with a duplex so um, I've uh, given it still given it 8 out of 10 because most people use two trekking poles and there's the Z-Pax carbon fiber ones to go along with it um, stakes needed uh, this only needs eight so four for the corners one for each side and two for the head and foot box pull out so that's only eight stakes so that's actually really good that's fairly minimal stakes the way I did stakes rate um, um, scores was I think you should the minimum or the ideal number of stakes to carry is only six so I've taken off one point for every stake extra over six so in this case it needs two extras over six so that takes a score t down by two from ten to nine to eight so eight out of ten uh, for stakes needed there's only eight and it gets eight points pitch speed how fast is it to set up well I didn't actually do a very good job because this whole uh, lovely backdrop that I've got to shoot at is uh, is not really flat it's actually sloping so it makes it more difficult to, to pitch all of these tents actually but I think I've done a pretty good job but normally I've used this tent for many uh, uh, many times to pitch it's a fast pitch it should take about three minutes five minutes max so I've given it a score of 9 out of 10, it's pretty fast to pitch, particularly if you use Bigfoot's method, which I use all the time when I pitch this tent. Um, pitch ease, I think it's easy. So I've given it for speed, I've given it 9 out of 10. For ease, I've given it 9 out of 10. Uh, now we get on to the door usability. I've given it 7. So um, I think it's moderately easy to use, but um, the pole obstructs the doorway. You know, you're trying to get in and out of this lovely rainbow zipper door like this as I said in my review so it's actually a beautiful big opening when you fully open it there's jelly poles in the way you gotta go on this side or that side it's not a big deal but it's still it's not perfect okay I like things to be as perfect as possible so um, I've given it this doorway a moderate um, score of 7 out of 10 um, awning option yes there is an awning option and I've done a video on this you can use your Z-Pax or any brand rain skirt to make a nice covered awning out here, attaching it to each of these tie-outs for the door, plus this top bit, plus two extra poles or carbon fiber um, poles. So yes, you can um, make um, an awning out of it, and you can, if you've got two people and they've got rain skirts, you can make twin awnings. Um, so I've actually given that a 10 out of 10. I think that's pretty awesome. Multi-using your, you know, part of your rain kit or your tent and shelter kit, and those awnings make it really good to sit under particularly when it's wet and you're trying to cook safely you know sort of a little bit outside your tent so that's 10 out of 10 um, wet entry rating I've given this only a two I've used this in the rain before and trying to get in there when you've got a raincoat on and you're wet it's, it's virtually impossible to get in under here when it's all st uh, stuck out like this is out like this and you just you know you're trying to get into the door with just one of them like this there's virtually nowhere you can crouch under here before you have to get in there and get out of the rain and take all your wet gear with you and make the floor of your um, tent all wet so I think the uh, wet entry um, capability of this tent is not very good so I've only given it a 2 out of 10 in that category uh, poor floor space I've given this an 8 out of 10 and my notes are that's good but it's still crowded even when you've got um, yourself particularly when you've got a 25 inch pad like I often do no. it's actually quite crowded down the side for all your gear your pack and your stuff you always need a little bit of like open space so you can like sit in or crouch in and then the rest of it's pretty much taken up by your pack and that's pretty much it so I, I, I mean it's better than having a one person tent so 
so I I've given it an 8 out of 10 headspace once you're in here. Um, let's get in there and I'll show you. So, uh, headspace, um, it's really good in the centre, heaps of headspace, but um, at the ends down here, it's marginal. Like you've pretty much got to stay right in the centre, heaps of headspace, 48 inch or 46 by the time you've got the curve here and the cantonary cut. But down here it's limited, like when you're lying down, like this, you know, particularly when you've got a three inch, two or three inch inflatable pad, your head's very close to the top, so it's marginal. And same, same with the footsies down there. When you've got your three inch pad, look up like that, your feet, you don't have shoes on, but your feet are touching the, the uh, foot box, even with the pull out, you know, pulled out. That's often why lots of people, including myself, got a wet foot, uh, foot box in, the, um, in your sleeping bag, and often your sleeping bag end was, was wet. So often people ended up sleeping diagonal uh, to avoid that or trying to pitch your tent higher by using, you know, 49 or 50 inch height poles. Um, your, your side walls, bathtub side walls will raise up so, and then your floor space gets smaller, but they're prepared to do that to re so that they don't have to sleep diagonal and they don't get a wet foot box in the sleeping bag. So overall, what have I given my uh, foot space? Only five. Well, headspace I've given 6 out of 10, foot space I've given 5 out of 10 for those reasons. So the next uh, category is stealth privacy. So I've given this one um, only 2 out of 5 for stealth because no matter what colour you have it in, even if you have it in camo like my Sex Hexamid Solo Plus over there is, um, the colour is good, the stealth colour is good but it's got a very tent light look. So any sort of silhouette it looks like a tent, got two pigs and two doors out the side. So it's not particularly stealthy even if it is in camo. Um, but privacy, I've given it as five out of five because um, you can just pin down everything. And you know, particularly if you've got a, um, uh, a thicker material that's less translucent, then you've got pretty good pri privacy. Second last category is water protection. Uh, I've said mostly good, but water can get in via the head or foot end. So, like I've mentioned in my review and in my other videos, how did water get inside? If your um, sleeping bag or pack pushes down there uh, with the floating bathtub floor, it can push it out from under the cover of the fly and then water can seep through and leak down in through this mesh and then into the inside of the bathtub floor. And so, not everyone has gets to, to experience that joy. In fact, most people don't. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. But some people do, including myself and many other people who have commented on my videos of, the, of such problem. Uh, and it's been a mystery. How on earth have I ended up with a puddle in my duplex? I thought it was watertight. Well, that's how. It's just a consequence of the floating bathtub floor and being mindful not to push it out from under the cover of the tarp. So, overall, I've still given it an 8 um, out of 10. And lastly, wind protection. The bathtub floor um, side walls. Look how big those side walls are, man. They are so tall that when you're lying down in there, pretty much if the wind is blowing in through here, it blows straight in through over your head because you're pretty much under the cover of the high bathtub floor. So it's actually excellent wind protection. The vestibules over here, they're actually quite high. So the wind can actually get under here and come in there, but your high bathtub floors really block most of that wind. It doesn't sort of blow in through. It blocks it. Through. Very, very good.
Okay, on to the new kid on the block, the Plexamid. I'm so excited about this one. Let's see how it scores. Is the new kid on the block going to be able to overtake the duplex? Is it going to be able to keep off the competition from the Hexamid Solo gang? We'll find out. Well, the first one, the weight. Man, it's a, it's a, it's been a Jenny, Jenny Craig. It's been on Weight Watchers for like its whole life. It's only 423 grams on my scale. So it gets a 10 out of 10 out of mine. Next thing is volume. So volume, when I submerged it in the um, water, it actually was a little bit higher volume than the duplex at five liters. So okay, we're onto the Plexamid tent now. And we'll put that one in the jar. So there we go, there's the Plexamid tent. It's gonna be a bit hard to get in, let's see. Let's put it in this way. Oh look, just submerged it there. I've had to squish it down a little bit. And there's a bit of full, like air in there. But that's gone over just over the 10. And I'm just, so it's just gone over the 10. So I'd say I'm going to call it 10. So that is gone from 5 to 10. So that's 5 litres. So it only scored in my book 6 out of 10. Next one, cost. So it was $549. US dollars, so it's 50 bucks cheaper than the duplex. So it's still very good value for a Cuban fiber tent or a Dyneema tent. So I give it a nine out of 10 on, uh, on value and cost. Sec fourth one, poles needed. Well, the whole purpose for this thing being is twofold as I see. One, it's for people who only want to carry one pole, like Joe Valesco, um, and don't want to carry two poles that would be required for the duplex, which is a winner tent already. And I think he was looking for an upgrade to the Hexamid Solo Plus uh, with a sewn-in bathtub floor. So he took the opportunity to improve the design even better. Okay, so that one, um, I give that one 10 out of 10 because it only requires one pole, one 48-inch pole or 47-inch pole, which is what this one here um, works with, uh, with my one. Next one, stakes needed. Well, it actually needs 10 stakes, this guy. So um, I've taken four points off. So one point off for every stake over six stakes that it needs, because I think stick six stakes is the is the ideal number of stakes that uh, you should be attention require. Um, and so it only gets six out of ten. So it requires ten stakes, four for the corners, one for the front, one for the back, and then four pullouts. Now the pullouts could could be optional, but you really do want the pullouts to give you as much headroom as and volume as you can because it is a, just a single pole tent, so you want everything you can get, so you really should carry 10 stakes. So only six out of 10 for that one. Um, pitch speed, it's pretty fast too. I've pitched it a few times now, and I don't think it's quite as fast and foolproof as the duplex, but I think it's, uh, it is still pretty fast and I'm getting better at it. So I give it a, 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 a score of nine out of 10. It should only take three to five minutes. Um, and as far as ease go, it's moderately easy. So not quite as easy as the duplex. So the duplex I gave nine out of 10, this one I'm gonna give eight out of 10. It does require a little bit more fussing around. And particularly if the ground is sloping like this one it is here, you can still really stuff it up because the, the floor is quite, quite close to the, to the ground here. There's not a lot of um, sort of like um, space on the edges there. So it requires a bit more um, sort of mucking around. I haven't actually pitched it very well uh, tonight. Um, so door usability, this front door here, um, I've given it a score of 6 out of 10 because there's only one door compared to the duplex where there's two doors. So I've given it moderate door usability. It's got the same criticism as the duplex though, I think. So it's very um, sort of uh, not a lot of space here, particularly when trying to get into the wet. But it's also got the same problem as the duplex. And that is, it's got this beautiful big rain door, ra rainbow door zipper like this to get into, but it's got the pole in the way. I don't know if you can avoid that, obviously probably not with a single pole tent, but it's still very annoying. So I only give it a six out of 10 because the pole is still obstructing the doorway. Da, da, da. Points down for that, Joe, sorry. Um, vestibule space. So I actually think the vestibule space is slightly bigger for some reason than the duplex, but because there's only one door, I only give it a seven out of 10, whereas I gave the duplex an eight out of 10. Because there's two, two vestibules and two doors, so there's more space all around, even though there's got a slight, probably a bit bigger vestibule here. Um, so this one only gets seven. 
awning option. Yes, you can use your rain skirt to make a beautiful awning and in my first look video I show you how. It's actually not quite as good a fit as the duplex because these little tie backs, which is what I use to connect the, um, the rain skirt to, they're a little bit further down, so they're a little bit further away, so I'd have to add a little bit of elastic. Whereas on the duplex, you just clip them right in and the geometry is perfect just the way it is. Um, and that's a rain skirt that was the flat rain skirt, the rectangular one. So I'm not sure if you can still buy that from Z-Packs, but you, you could when I was uh, buying them. Um, wet entry option, wet entry ratio, rating, I should say. It's going to be it's the it's going to be the same as the duplex. It's going to be very difficult to get in here when you when it's wet, when it's raining, when you've got a raincoat on, raincoat on without getting it wet all in on the floor of the tent. So I've only given this one a two out of ten. Okay. So next one is um, floor space. I've given this one a seven out of ten. Okay, and I've given it a seven out of ten. It's got uh, good room for main gear inside and a very small pack. So let's have a look and see how that looks. So here we go. We're on this sloping ground. I'd never pitch on a sloping ground like this, but I wanted the backdrop with the lake. So I did it. So floor space inside. It's, um, it's good for, it's a one and a half person tent is what it's rated at. It basically means it's an oversized single person tent. Great for one person with 20 or 25 inch pad, plus gear over here. You can see there's the pack um, that would uh, fit quite comfortably off. You took all your stuff out, you could lie a bit down there, a bit down there, there. So, and any extra stuff you put out here, out in the vestibule. So you could undo that, clip this down. Uh, cinch that up like that and you'd have your pack and all your extra bits and stuff out there so uh, next one is headspace man there's heaps of headspace so this like um, like wire fiberglass sort of looks like a fish looks like a Christian fish symbol here gives spreads the uh, roof out for a single pole tent They've got this fiberglass, like fish shaped fiberglass, um, like spreader that massively increases like the headroom by creating a little flat area there that like gives it a little roof and then allows the walls to slope down from there. So that's massively increased this headroom. Like I'm six foot and I've probably got another whole foot from my head in the middle up to the top of the, um, of the roof. So it's really good in the center. I give it four out of five for center. You can't go much that way or back or forward, um, but right in the middle, it's good where you sort of do most of your work. So my head goes there, my head goes there. Okay, so it's got really good headroom, um, but at the head end, I've given it a two out of um, two out of ten, or sorry, two out of five, because when you're lying down here, admittedly, I haven't pitched it very well and. It's sloping, but it's still going to be a consequence of this design. Is that when I'm two inches up off on my inflatable pad, or two and a half inches, my head's pretty much right on the roof there, even with that pull out there. So I'm only giving it two out of ten, sorry, two out of five. So that's a two, sorry, four for the head room in the middle, two for the head room in the uh, when you're lying down at the head end. So that gives a total of um, six, um, and then foot space. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be less foot space. You can see my feet there. Once you've got two inches of uh, inflatable pad, your foot is gonna be right on the roof. You're gonna have to really put your feet over here to to manage that. So yeah, I'm only gonna give it a four out of ten. I think that's the fair fair uh, fair score. Okay, I'm gonna go into um, stealth and privacy rating. So I've given it a stealth rating of four. So not for the colour. But just for the shape because it's just got a single pole it's going to be very quite unobtrusive um, particularly when the um the doors are pinned down um it looks pretty yeah it looks pretty unobtrusive so i've given it four out of five for stealth and privacy man can button it right down so all the sides are going to be completely sealed down so you won't be able to see in particularly if you've got a heavier cuban fiber that's less translucent so overall i've given it nine out of ten 
So, next one is um, water protection. I've given it a rating of 9 out of 10. Seems good, water less likely to get in. And that's particularly the problem that the duplex had, which was it's going to be less likely to put that push out because it's got all these elastics and it's not, you know, it's only a smaller foot end and a smaller head end. And even the side ones have got these elastics with the reinforced pull outs on the uh, wall. So I reckon it seems it's going to be less likely to actually be able to push it out there. You probably still be out in that case, but I think it's a bit less likely. So that's a good improvement. So I've improved, increased the score to a 9 out of 10 for water protection. And finally, um, wind protection. I've given it the same score as the duplex at um, 9 out of 10 because it's got these really nice high bathtub, 8 inch bathtub floor, which uh, stops the wind blowing in and pretty much blows over you as you're lying down there, sleeping and counting sheep. Okay, moving quickly now, because I'm running out of light, we're moving on to the third one, the Hexamid Solo Plus Tent. So this is the uh, one of the original designs that um, Z-Pax came out with like 10 years ago. Um, and this is the tent, which actually has a, a sewn-in mesh floor, so like a fly mesh floor. And then you've got to insert your own like bathtub floor which I've done in here and that bathtub floor is actually doubles as a, a poncho as well. So I really liked that idea of, uh, of having that multi-purpose sort of floor being a raincoat. Um, but I just find it's a pain to get in and out of and I think what ends up happening is people leave their removable floor in there the whole time and then what's the point of it being removable? You've actually got a double floor with a mesh which you could consider a ground sheet and it works very well for that plus your bathtub floor. So I just don't like the hassle of getting it in and out. Anyway, so um, Hexamid Solo Plus, let's quickly go through them because I know that most of you are interested in mostly the duplex and the Plexamid because these two Hexamids are now no longer available. Uh, actually, the, sorry, the, the Hexamid Solo Tarp is, uh, which is equivalent to the one I've got there. So I've given this one for weight. Um, it, I've given it an 8 out of 10. It's 453 grams for the actual tent, which is the tarp and the mesh floor plus another 144 grams for the removable bathtub floor, which is also a poncho. So that gives a total of 594 grams. So I've given that a respectable score with those combined weights of under 600 grams of eight out of 10. Um, volume of the tent. So next one is the uh, Hexamid Solo Plus tent in camo. Go. that's just over nine litres so it's gone from five to nine there's a little bit of air in this bag so it's just over nine so I'm gonna call it nine so that's four litres is only four litres I'm um, not including the bathtub floor so it's quite small so I've given that an eight out of ten cost it's 450 it was 450 dollars for the tent and then 175 dollars for the um, the poncho, the bathtub floor. So that was 625 US dollars, so more expensive than the duplex. So still good value, particularly when you think that the floor is a, a rain uh, raincoat as well. So that gives you an at, at, at eight out of 10. I'll give that an eight out of 10. Uh, poles needed, it only needs one pole. So that's a good thing. Um, and But you need, the pole is a funny geometry. You've got to have it at this sloped angle. So it sticks up in there and you've got this sort of like me inbuilt awning which is kind of cool because it creates a little bit of a covered sort of spot there and good privacy but it makes for a, a, a very low door but anyway it's hard to actually get this pole sloped right um, and the pole needs to be a 52 inch uh, which is 132 centimeters and some poles don't go to that that length you probably can stretch most poles to it but some poles might not so I have given that a what have I given that I've given it a 8 out of 10. Um, stakes needed, like the Plexamid, that uh, Plexamid replaces this guy. Uh, it, this also requires 10, the same thing. Four in each corner, one at the front, one at the back, and then four pull-outs. One at the foot box, one at the head box, and two at the side back walls. And you really do need those to give you as much volume as you can. As a single, single pole tent, this is much worse than the uh, than the Plexamid because it doesn't have that flat spreader um, so that's why it has had to go higher so this one's 52 inch versus the new one the Plexamid is just a vertical pole and that's 48 inches 
Um, so Z packs are settling down onto just pretty much a 48 inch pole height, and that's it across all of their tents, which I think is great. Um, so uh, I have given it six out of ten for the stakes needed because it needs ten. So that's four point four points off for extra every stake over over six. So it takes it down to six out of ten. Um, pitch speed. Well, this takes a long time to pitch. Hey birds, takes a long time to pitch and get right. There's a lot of fuddling around. I didn't fuddle around with it too much. It's just fun. And yeah, it doesn't look too bad, but it's still not great. Probably just as bad as the Pleximid actually. But um, overall, I've used it like, several times, and each time it's just been a pain in the backside, and it's been slow with all the fiddling around. So I've only given it a I've given it a rating of three out of ten. It often takes ten or more minutes to get it right, and try it again, try, try it three times to get it right. So I've said it's painful to pitch uh, in terms of speed, and in terms of ease, I've said that it's challenging. So it, I've also given it just three out of ten for its pitch ease, so it's really difficult to get all the geometry right. Um, door usability, I've given it 3 out of 10 because the door is very low because this awning here is part of uh, the design. If you cockatoos would be quiet. Um, so the door, um, door usability, the pole is in the way as, as all good Z-Packs tents seem to have. Um, the door, the pole is in the way, right in the middle, and to couple, to enhance that that terribleness as well, the rainbow, uh, the rainbow door, nice big U-shaped door. Okay, there it is. The rainbow door is very low, so it's extremely low. It's only like 76 centimeters high, like three quarters of a meter rather than that one which is almost a meter on the two duplexes and the plexamid so it's extremely hard to get into you've got to bend down under here get under here graze your back as you're going through it and get in here so this was probably the thing i hated the most about this tent it just sucked getting in there and there was no covered awning because the tent the awning is this bit which is part of the tent once you're in there you're in the tent so there's really no awning so i've given it a um Three out of ten for door usability. The door is it's poor, low door, and the pole obstructs. Um, next one is the vestibule space. Pretty much, there's no vestibule. Like the vestibule is part of this awning here, so none. The inbuilt awning gives slim front space, so there's a tiny little space, bit of space there, but not much. You pretty much got to put a little bit of stuff, maybe a little bit of stuff there, and then I'll hop the rest of your stuff at the back. Um, vestibule space. Uh, awning option, no, so you can't use your rain skirt here, I've tried it to make an extra covered awning, it just doesn't work because this thing's in the way and you know, it just it just doesn't work, so no, so this, this awning is inbuilt but it doesn't really act like an awning because once you're in there, you're in the tent and all the, you know, if you're trying to cook under there, just all the gases, they can't escape and they get caught there and then you die. Okay, uh, wet entry rating, um, okay, the mesh floor helps, so you could actually you know, take this off like this, and then if you get in there and it's wet and you're dripping, so you push the bathtub floor back um, and it's dripping, the water will go through the mesh. So that's not too bad. Probably a little bit better than the um, than the Plexamid and the Hexamid because their bathtub floor will just capture all the water. So I've given this one the wet entry rating a six out of ten, so a bit better. Um, floor space. Let's go and have a look. So floor space, I've given it a six out of 10. Um, you can sort of maybe fit your pack in where the bathtub floor is, but it's gonna be a tight squeeze. Or you could, what I tried to often do is put your pack in a view on the, like the mesh floor out there, outside the bathtub floor. And that sort of, you've actually got a bit of room to do that, but if it's wet and raining, it's not ideal. Because right? the bottom of your pack and your gear will get wet, particularly when the water comes in through here. So. Um, overall, I've given it a floor space rating of 6 out of 10. Okay, uh, next one is foot space. Uh, marginal, I've given it a marginal rate, so your foot goes up like that, and you're touching the floor, you're touching the wall of the foot box. So I've given it a 3 out of 10. The quilt of your foot box will often get wet. Um, what about your head space? Did I miss that bit? Head space, 
very good in the center. So here we go, it's very high in the center, it's 52 inch pole height. Um, so that's good, but at the head end, just like the Plexamid, once you go up on your uh, two and a half inch pad, you're gonna be pretty much touching the roof or very close to it. So I've only given it a two out of 10, oh sorry, two out of five for that. So I think that gives you a six or a seven, maybe I've added it up wrong. As for the stealth rating, I've given this one a 10 out of 10. It's got a single pole, so it's very, very unobtrusive, unobtrusive, and particularly since it's got this sort of inbuilt awning, even when you're sitting in the tent, sitting up, you can't see your face or the top part of your torso. Um, privacy, when these doors pinned right down, man, it's super private, like no one can see in. You can't, you know, even when, even when these doors are rolled up and you're sitting up, like no one can even see your face. All they can see is this bottom mesh um, or this, you know, material and the, and the camera, it's amazing. And the black mesh here, that black mesh there is also very hard to see through in a lot of angles. So it sort of gives you more privacy. And then when you have this, these doors pulled down and cinched down to here, it's also very, very um, private. So I've given that 10 out of 10 for that. So, so that's with the doors all pulled down. It's very, very private, very, very sort of stealthy. And the color only adds to that, but even no matter what color you've got, it's still extremely unobtrusive and um, very, very able to uh, to not be observed. So in this particular one, I've even made changed the guy lines to black, so you can't even see the guy lines. It came with yellow, but I made it into black, so it's even more stealthy. Water protection, I've only given it a 6 out of 10. Uh, it's not great. Uh, the mesh guides water into the tent. So when the water is dripping, you know, down there, like the water's all dripping, 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 and it like bleeds into the into the middle part here. So that's what your bathtub floor's about to keep that away from you. It means you can't use too much of this stuff for trying to keep stuff dry. Uh, and finally, wind protection. It's adequate, I've given it a 6 out of 10. Uh, it's but it's breezy. It's good. It's good as a summer tent. And these walls typically are only five inch high, if that. And sometimes they're like nothing. Like that one, it's like an inch or two. So just depending on the pitch. So um, overall, uh, that's the scores that I've given them. Okay, lucky last. This is the Hexamid. Solo pocket tarp. So it's just a tarp with no floor and no mesh, and it's made out of 0.34 um, ounce per square yard Cuban fiber. Now, Z Packs doesn't make this one anymore within the 0.34, I think they make it in the 0.51 ounce in the olive green color. So you can still get this tent, but with a slightly thicker material, which I think is actually a better idea. I'm always really nervous when I use this one, it's so, so uber thin. Um, and there's virtually almost doesn't seem like there's much weight gain either on the using the slightly thicker material So I really like this tarp. There's limited um, space underneath there But it's packed so small and so light. It's just pretty amazing and it looks like surreal So let's go through the scores on this hut puppy. Well actually before we do that you can see that I've got the tarp and then I've got an optional solo um, bathtub floor so that is clipped into the corners and there is no like bug protection. I've got a Cedar Summit like little inner lightweight nano mesh tent or like screen that can go from the top in in here and sort of drape inside the bathtub floor but I don't have that here at the moment. I just find it painful to actually set up. It's a lot of bad assing around. So I don't like doing it. Um, so let's go through the scores. This guy, this guy for weight, I've given it 10 out of 10. It's 113 grams for the tarp plus all the guy lines, all the bits and pieces and there's 88 grams for the bathtub floor which is optional so all up it's only 200 grams and with the Cedar Summit net tent only adds another 85 grams so it's under 300 grams still which is like half the weight of the duplex and half the, well, less than half the volume so 10 out of 10 on weight um, volume it's only one litre That's gone from five to six, so it is one litre in volume.
So the Hexamid Solo Pocket uh, Tarp in 0.34 Cuban is one litre. So it's amazing, it's so small, it's like the size of a softball. Uh, so that's 10 out of 10. Um, cost is one, was $199 for this tarp, uh, plus $95 for the bathtub floor, gives it uh, $294 US. So again, half the price of the duplex. Um, and so that's also really great value, so I give it a 10 out of 10. Um, it only requires one 48 inch pole. This is a 47 inch Mont Bell pole, and that still works just fine. So that's nine out of 10. It is a slightly sloping pole, but it seems to, I can see to manage it a bit better than the other one, the uh, Hexamid Solo Plus Tent, that you have to manage the pole with the mesh floor as well, whereas this one just got a free floor, so it's a little easier. So nine out of 10 for that, just one pole. Um, stakes needed, it only needs eight. So four for the corners, one for the front, one for the back, and only two pull-outs on the back walls. So that only has two points taken off because it's only two pot, two stakes over what I think is the ideal amount of stakes, which is six. So it's got eight, so it gets eight out of ten. Um, pitch speed, it's moderate. So just like the Hexamid Solo Plus Tent, takes a lot of farting, fiddle farting around to get the geometry right. I've pitched this one many times as well, and I'm getting better at this one, but it's still fiddly because uh, if you don't get it right then you've got no, no room on the sides but um, it's probably not as hard as this uh, Hexamid Solo Plus Tent so it still takes me about 6 minutes or more to, to pitch so uh, it's moderate in its speed so I give it 5 out of 10 um, It's pitch ease, I've rated it as again challenging not as challenging as that one but probably still very challenging so I've given it a, a score of only 4 out of 10 um, Door usability, it's sort of marginal um, it's got a low awning or low doorway like the Hexamid Solo Plus um, and the pole is still in the way but because there's nothing else to deal with, no mesh, probably a little easier than the Sol Hexamid Solo Plus over there and so I've given it a 5 out of 10. Still not great but not as bad as the Hexamid Solo Plus tent. Uh, vestibule space, I've given it a score of 0, oh, sorry, a score of 1. So that's the vestibule and like there's no rain coverage and so um, it's pretty much unusable for any sort of weather protection. You can leave your stuff out there, but it's just going to get wet or whatever. You've got to have your stuff in there on the side, so it's very limited. Um, do you have an awning option? No, there's no way to put a, um, a rain skirt on here. I've tried, um, and I don't really want to attach anything here for fear of ripping it like a, like a little pull-out or a tie-out. So, um, no, the, uh, there's no awning. It's just this inbuilt something or other, which is almost not, not like an awning. So yeah, I've given it a score of five, just like the um, just like the Hex Hexamid Solo Plus tent. Um, wet entry rating, I've given it a rating of eight out of ten, much better than the other ones because you can, if you're wet, you can sort of hover under here, move that back. That elastic band shouldn't be there. I mean, I've lost my little door thing there, but you can move that back. There you go, I've broken it. Uh, move that back and sort of hunch in here. Get all off, get all, shake all your water off, and then take your raincoat off probably, and you're still under a little bit of coverage, and then get into your dry, you know, um, uh, bathtub floor. So I've given that one an eight out of ten. Probably fairly generous. Um, cool floor space. Let's have a look at the floor space. Okay, here we are inside the Hexamid Solo Pocket Tarp. It's pretty amazing. It's very clear and very see-through, but. So there's a look out there, there's no mesh anywhere, it's just reball in it. Um, so uh, we're up to floor space. So I've given it a rating of 5 out of 10. Um, I've said it's tight, and it is tight. This is just a single person um, bathtub floor. There's not much overlap here, there's not much gap here. So pretty much you've got to put the stuff out there. You pretty much might be able to put like a little bit here, but you definitely can't put a pack in there. Like, see that? It's just like too tight. It's gonna flatten out the side of the bathtub floor there and just like ruin you with it's wet. So your pack's gotta stay out there pretty much, so cover it up as best you can. So headspace, I've given it um, a rating of four. Three for the center. So it's, it's 48 inches there. So I've got, I'm not, my head's not touching. I've probably got half a foot or so up to the roof. But as soon as I move anywhere else, I'm touching the roof. So I've given it um, three out of 10 for the center. And then at the head end, 
like right here. There's no pull out there, and then you go up here with your two and a half inch pad, and you're pretty much touching the roof or very close to it. So I've only given it one out of five for that. So three plus one is four, so that's four out of ten. What about um, foot space? Similar here. Here's the foot space, I've given it two out of ten. Um, your quilt is always going to be touching the roof and it's going to get wet. So your, your two, and two inches on your, on your sleeping pad and your feet are going to touch the end. So uh, that one I've given it a rating of two out of ten. Okay, what about stealth rating? I have given it a rating of six. So it's um, stealth or privacy. I've given it a rating of six, five out of five for its shape. It's very going to be very hard to see it because it's just a single pole. But privacy, look, it's got that open front end there. So it is going to be very unprivate. So I've only given it one out of five for that. So six out of 10 total. Water protection. Um, water protection, I've only given it a three out of 10. It's poor. Open front and high sides. Open front, uh, high sides to get head headroom. So you've got to have a, this front is all open and then the sides here, you know water's going to get up through there and it can get up through there, particularly if it's blowing a gale as well. So water protection is pretty poor, 3 out of 10. And then finally, wind protection. I've said it's breezy, just like the Hex Mid Solo Plus. It's good for summer. The bathtub floor walls are only kind of like 5 inch walls. So they're going to block some wind, but it's probably going to get you as it blows over the side walls. So that's it. So I think you're all busting to know who's won. Well, I've got my four place ribbon place holders. So who came in fourth? Let's see, on a total of 98 points out of a total trussable of 170 comes in the Hexamid Solo Plus Tent. It gets the participation Red Merry Christmas ticket ribbon. Well done, Hexamid Solo Plus Tent. Good on you for participating. Oh, not really. Okay, who came third? Who gets the bronze ribbon? On 100 points, that goes to, drum roll, Hexamid Solo Tarp. 100 points. Well done, little clear baby. And finally, we're left with two contenders. Who's going to be the king? Well, I have to say, it was right down to the wire. It was within one point and I'm quite astonished at the result. I have to say, coming in second, a very, very gallant second with the silver ribbon on 126 points. Yes, 126 points even with my recalibrated scores. Oh, where's my Christmas tape? Here it is. I have to have a Christmas tape to go with the silver ribbon. Is the new kid on the block, the Plexamid. Which means the winner and undisputed king remaining is the Z Pax favourite, the Z Pax duplex tent. Well done, good on you, Mr. Z Pax. Duplex gets the Merry Christmas Gold Star ribbon. Look at that. So, that was the Z Pax tent off. One first place is the duplex. Very closely followed by the Plexamid, the new cleat on the block, then the, then the Solo Plus Tarp, which is ongoing, and then the Hexamid Solo Tent, which is no longer. And I'm not sorry about that one. Hope you liked it. Check it out. Check out our upcoming stuff later on.